Hi everyone, it's Setach Reefer here, and welcome to this new video series called Reefkeeping 101. As some of you might be aware, I used to have a different series called Focus Friday, uh, where I was releasing a new reef video uh, every Friday, where I was explaining stuff about my reef tanks. Um, and this series, Reefkeeping 101, is a successor to that series, so uh, I'll try to release a new video every weekend. Uh, in which I will be discussing a specific subject. So the new videos will come out on Friday, Saturday or Sunday, uh, so you have something to uh, to look forward to. So the very first video that I made in the Focus Friday series was a review about the uh, copper band butterfly fish, or otherwise known as the Gelmon rostratus, which is a Latin name. Uh, but it's uh, commonly known as the uh, the the butterfly fish, the copper band butterfly fish. So the um, the copper band is a very uh, beautiful fish. It's also pretty hard to uh, to keep, or at least initially when you buy it, it's quite hard to keep. Uh, so that's why I'm doing a a new video since this uh, this fish has been in my tank for uh, for uh, nearly six years now. It's been traveling with me f since 2014, November 2014, so that means that the fish is uh, at least six years old because it was still very small when I uh, when I initially bought it and I hope to enjoy it for, uh, for uh, many more years. Uh, so let's get into it. Um, well, you might have already spotted him, he is right here. So when I initially bought him, he was just uh, about this big, I think. So it has grown significantly over the years. And, uh, well, the, the copper band is considered to be one of the more beautiful fish, most beautiful fish that you can buy uh, for your reef tank. It has very peculiar behavior, which you uh, might and probably will see in this video. It's always looking through the reef, looking for small creatures to eat. Um, so that's what you'll see him uh, doing uh, today as well. Uh, the reason why these copper bands are considered hard to keep is that they are quite difficult eaters at first. Um, so um, when you buy one at your local fish store, uh, it's very important to always check if it's already eating preferably frozen foods since that's what you want him to eat as his main food source. And of course, you can also feed him various other stuff, like small pieces of mussel, for example. Um, but it will also do very well on uh, prepared foods, like for example, mustic by Easy Reefs, which is a very uh, a unique food that you can mix yourself uh, with, with a bit of water. So it's powdery, you mix it with water and then put it on the glass of your reef tank. I will do that in the second half of this video, so I'll do some feeding uh, in the last few minutes of the, of the video, so you can also see it uh, eating. Um, so yeah, like I was saying, when you go to your local fish store to buy one, make sure it's not very thin already, because that's already the first sign of a unhealthy copper band, uh, so make sure it's not super thin, and always make sure that you have seen it eating frozen foods or at least some live uh, foods like live mice or live artemia. Brine shrimp is what I mean. Um, so, so once you've gotten a hold of one of these beautiful fish at your local fish store, you have made sure that it's already eating, then uh, the fun can, uh, can begin. Do make sure that your fish are uh, compatible with this copper band butterfly. Uh, they are usually very friendly fish, very uh, peaceful fish towards uh, tank mates. Um, there are some things to, to keep in mind. Never buy more than one of these since they don't tolerate each other very well. So always just buy the one. And also they are notoriously known to pick fights with, uh, with yellow tanks. Uh, since, uh, well, I it's, there's a bit of mystery why they do it, but most of the times uh, they are not a very good match with the, with the, the bright yellow tanks that you uh, see in a lot of reef tanks. So uh, please keep that in mind. Also, um, this fish 
can be considered reef safe in about 50 to 60 percent of the cases that I've seen. Um, it's, it's, with some people, it might resort to uh, to eating LPS or uh, zoanthus uh, after uh, after a while. Uh, mine hasn't been doing that, so it has been uh, behaving uh, very uh, very well for uh, for the last six years. Um, they do eat Itasia, which is of course a very nice thing since you don't want those in your uh, in your tank. And they will also eat um, feather dusters, and that might be a bigger issue if you have feather dusters in your tank as corals, and you want to keep them. Then uh, buying uh, one of those copper bands might not be the brightest idea, uh, since they will uh, literally devour it in minutes. So I've I've tried this couple of times where I had some uh, some uh, some feather dusters growing in my sump and after placing them in the uh, in the reef tank in the display tank uh, they were gone in about uh, five to ten minutes after the copper band found them so they are uh, yeah they are they are the corals that they will uh, will definitely uh, try to uh, try to eat also make sure that your tank is uh, large enough to host one of these fish. Um, when I started I had a 350 liter tank where it was still very small. Then I upgraded to a 500 liter tank. It grew even further and now it's in a 1200 liter tank which is uh, large enough for this, uh, for this fish to, uh, to thrive. Uh, but if your tank is lower or less than 600 liters then you might want to think again since as you can see these fish can uh, can become quite large and need quite some space when they uh, when they grow up so that's definitely something to uh, to uh, to consider overall i think the fish makes a very uh, 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 makes it look makes the tank look very uh, very bright and vivid uh, since the white color combined with the uh, the yellow is a very uh, distinguished uh, color that uh, that you don't see with a lot of other fish so that's uh, definitely something to uh, uh, yeah to uh, to appreciate in this fish. There are of course a host of other butterfly fish that you can uh, try to uh, keep in your tank. Uh, these are uh, considered less reef safe in general. Uh, so if you're looking for a butterfly fish that has the most chance of being uh, reef safe, then it's definitely this one. Um, so yeah, that's uh, something to uh, to consider as well. They do well in uh, kind of most conditions. They can handle quite some uh, some flow. They will uh, decide for themselves where they want to swim. Um, they don't have a lot of requirements on your water parameters. So um, I have had tanks where the phosphates were uh, below 0 0.1 and the nitrates were below 10. It was doing fine, and in this tank the uh, the nutrients are quite uh, a lot higher. Uh, I think my phosphates are around 0 0.5 now, and my nitrates are around 50. And as you can see, um, the fish is uh, is doing uh, doing well and uh, not uh, well. It's not injured or hurt by it. Most of my other fish, or actually all my other fish, are also uh, fine with the uh, with the water parameters. So I'd say it's it's a very in terms of keeping it once you get it to eat it's a pretty easy fish to uh, to keep so the next part of the video is where I will be feeding it so I'll switch off quickly now and get back to you once the food is in the tank so here we are again and uh, now right now I'll be placing some of the mustic which is uh, right here it's a it's a ball that I made from it in the uh, in the tank as you can see as you can see the fish are already excited because they know what's coming so when I release it you can see that the fish immediately start eating it they are very uh, very into this type of food um, and as you can see which is the most important thing I want to show you today is that the copper band is actually devouring it uh, pretty actively you can even hear it eating on it chomping away I'll let you listen to it for a minute
So that was uh, that was the fish uh, eating. I hope you can hear it a bit if you uh, put up your volume uh, a bit. And uh, yeah, as you can see, not only the uh, the copper band but also the tanks are very much into uh, this type of food, uh, which I have been using for years. So uh, yeah, definitely uh, one of my uh, favorite types of food. I feed this only once or twice a week um, as a as an extra type of food since my main food source is uh, uh, mice and uh, and brine shrimp, as I explained earlier, which I will also be feeding. So you can eat, see it eating that as well. I'll quickly move to the other side of the tank, and uh, let's hope that the uh, the fish are. Uh, willing to come this way so I've prepared a, a small uh, net with uh, with the mices and the brine shrimp and I hope you can see is that the uh, the copper band will actively eat the brine shrimp from the net so that's what I try to do I try to always accommodate him eating first and he will come to this little net and eat from it uh, of course now there's uh, also food on the other side so uh, yeah he's returning so this is the daily ritual and uh, yeah this is what he's always doing so um, yeah pri try to prioritize feeding this fish as it's uh, one of the slower eaters of the tank generally so mine has, uh, has learned to uh, to uh, to devour the food but if you buy one initially it might be a little slow on eating so target feeding it will uh, will definitely uh, help in, uh, in increasing the survival uh, chances, the survival rate of this fish. Um, and yeah, I think those are the most important things that I wanted to tell you about the, uh, the copper band butterfly fish. Overall, it's still one of my, uh, my favorite uh, reef tank fish. Um, yeah, like I explained, I have uh, had it for, uh, for six years, so uh, over time you get very, uh, very uh, used to it. And uh, yeah, you, you you take it for granted and then uh, when you look back at older videos and older pictures you can see how much it has grown and it is uh, yeah, really one uh, one of the prime pieces of this tank also one of the reasons why it's a part of the uh, the logo of my, uh, my channel uh, and it will be for the next uh, period of time since I, uh, yeah, I, I really like this, uh, this fish uh, a lot so that's it for the first uh, time uh, around in this uh, Reef Keeping 101 video series. If you have any suggestions or questions uh, about this, uh, this fish, or if you want to, uh, to, uh, to bring up a subject for one of the new episodes of Reef Keeping 101, please feel free to, uh, to uh, drop a comment in the comment section below. And uh, other than that, I want to wish you a, a good weekend. Stay safe out there. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.